Welcome to Downtown Sports, my name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, are the Toronto Maple Leafs still favorites to win the Canadian division? Don't think that I don't see you in the comments section talking about how fast I do the intro sometimes, so that one was for all of you guys. We'll come back to the question whether or not the Toronto Maple Leafs are favorites to win this division a little bit later on in the video. But so far, through eight games played, they do sit in first in the Canadian division. If you sort of buy points percentage, they are second to the Montreal Canadiens who have yet to lose in regulation. But still, keep that question in mind as we go through this video. Are they still favorites to win this division? Not going to spend too much time talking about the individual games that the Maple Leafs have played since I last made a video here on the channel, but they have played three games since my last video here. I thought the game on the 22nd against the Oilers could have gone either way for the Maple Leafs or the Oilers, but in that game, the puck decided to bounce in favor of the Maple Leafs. Uh, the game before that against the Oilers, it very much did not as a goal went in off Jake Muzzin's skates, but the game against the Calgary Flames that Jack Campbell started, obviously there was some controversy in this game, but again, I thought that this game could have gone either way for either sides, and the Maple Leafs ended up coming out on top 3-2 to two in this game, and then and of course, their most recent game, they played an amazing first period, gave it all back in the second period, uh, got themselves into penalty trouble in the third period, but ultimately um, didn't flounder once the Calgary Flames finally did tie the game. They kept battling and they got that fourth goal. And I think that this quote from Justin Hole really sums up how I feel about the team so far through eight games this season. I don't think we touched how good we can be. It's a very nice way of saying that the Maple Leafs haven't played up to their true potential, but have still find a way to be 6-2-0 after 8 games. I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong here on the channel, so I will tell you that I was wrong about Justin Hull, possibly considering throwing him into trade packages in the offseason. I don't know where the Maple Leafs would be without this guy through 8 games this year. You can believe that Justin Hole is being propped up by Jake Muzzin, but sometimes that's just the way that it goes, right? Having chemistry with your line mates is not a bad thing. It's a good thing, and Justin Hole and Jake Muzzin seem to have chemistry. If you can believe it or not, in the very early going, Justin Hall leads the team and expected goals above replacement so far. Emphasis on it being early, but still. I joked about it on Twitter the other day, but I said that Justin Hole's power source for his newfound powers is the long, majestic flow that this guy's been growing out over the last, uh, I guess, eight or nine months, however long quarantine has been so far. I don't know if it's something to the effect that the longer it is, the better he plays, and if that's the fact, uh, Justin, I'm sorry, you're never getting another haircut again. But seriously, guys, credit where credit is due, I was wrong. So far, I mean, it's only in eight games. I mean, I'm not going to crap on the guy just by saying it's early. He's played a hell of an eight game so far this year, and hopefully it continues. Now, I don't think I'm going to admit to being wrong about any of the things that I said about Frederick Anderson up until this point, because I think everything that I have said up until now has been justified. It has been warranted. The video that I made asking the question, what if the Maple Leafs traded Frederick Anderson at the time was completely valid. He hadn't played well, but... Over the last four games, ever since the Toronto Maple Leafs absolutely stomped all over the Winnipeg Jets, Frederick Anderson has turned in four good, consistent performances, and that's something that the team can really build off of. The thing that made us love Frederick Anderson throughout his first three seasons in Toronto was that we always knew what to expect from him. We never knew what to expect from the team in front of him, but we always knew that he would be there to bail them out to some degree. And over the last four games, I've felt that Frederick Anderson back in the net. And they're going to need Anderson to continue to be consistent as Jack Campbell is expected to miss about a month or 30 days or so with an extended leg. Uh, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate because Jack looked really good to start the season. Now, I want to start this off by saying that I am not a fan of Michael Hutchison. I'm sure he's a great dude, um, but no offense to him, I don't want him playing in the net. But we got to be fair to him, and looking at the numbers last year from the start of last season up until when Mike Babcock was fired, there was no goalie who faced a higher volume of high danger shots against than Michael Hutchison. In the six games that he played, the Toronto Maple Leafs absolutely fed him to the Wolves in back-to-back -back games, I believe. It was back-to-back -back starts, one against the Boston Bruins and the Washington Capitals on the second half of back-to-backs. 
You gotta remember that Michael Hutchison as an individual had more playoff wins too than the Toronto Maple Leafs did as a team last season. So that's not me going to bat for Michael Hutchison. That is just me leveling the playing field and trying to be objective about this player. So far through eight games, the Maple Leafs have battled adversity. They've missed Austin Matthews for a game. They've gone a couple of games without Joe Thornton, who was producing very, very well offensively on the top line with Matthews and Marner. They've gone without Nick Robertson, who I thought was going to be a sleeper option for this team all season long. Now they're missing Jack Campbell. They're going to continue to face adversity. And you get a goal from Travis Boyd, and you get a couple of goals from Wayne Simmons, and... Jimmy VC pots a couple of empty netters. Ilya Mikheyev looks dangerous off the rush all the time, but can't figure it out. It's just, these little pieces are coming together, and it's nice to see that the Maple Leafs are getting contributions from players not named Austin Matthews, John Tavares, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, and Zach Hyman. A couple weeks ago on this channel, I said that I would die on this hill that we had not seen the last of Pierre Engvall, and lo and behold, he has seized the opportunity that was given to him um, by the injuries that the Maple Leafs have suffered over the last couple of weeks, and I don't think this guy's coming out of the lineup. Maybe, maybe when the Maple Leafs are fully healthy, they won't be able to afford to have him on the active roster, or the taxi squad, and that's when he'll come out of the lineup, but there's a difference between not being able to afford this player and not wanting him on the roster. To start the season, there was a clear message that Sheldon Keefe tried to send this player, and I think the message was received because he's made a couple of nifty passes here and there, and I've really liked what he's been able to do when he's been on the ice. Last game against the Calgary Flames was Miko Lettinen's first game in the lineup where they actually played with 12 forwards and 6 defensemen, and I thought he was okay, he wasn't spectacular, he wasn't bad, he wasn't the Miko Lettinen that we were seeing over in the KHL just absolutely skating laps in the offensive zone and dancing people and walking all over that blue line like it was nothing, um, but as he gets more comfortable, maybe we'll see some more dynamic plays from him. They need to try to find some more ice time for Miko Lettinen, but another defenseman that they need to try to find some ice time for is Rasmus Sandin. What's it going to take for him to get into the lineup here? We've heard nothing about this guy so far to start the year. Is it going to take an injury on the blue line until we see him? I don't know. You just, you can't go the entirety of 2021 and not hear anything about this guy. Before I get back to the question that I opened the video with, I wanted to flash this quote back up on the screen by Justin Hull. I don't think we touched how good we can be. And if you've watched the eight games the Maple Leafs have played so far this year, yeah, I agree with him wholeheartedly. They definitely haven't been as good as they can be. They have another gear or two to give. And yet they still find themselves with the most points in the bank so far in the Canadian division. So when I see something like this from Dom Lushizen, where he is still favoriting the Toronto Maple Leafs to finish first in the division here, I believe it. And if you're a Habs fan, or a Jets fan, or a Flames fan, or a fan of any other team in the Canadian division, you don't like that. But when I look at the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I hear that quote from Justin Hole, I wholeheartedly agree with them. The Montreal Canadiens, in my mind, are already exceeding expectations or the expectations that were placed on them going into this season. The Montreal Canadiens barely made the play-in round last season, and yeah, they won their play-in round against the Pittsburgh Penguins, but I don't know how much good that really did for them. And last year is last year, and this year is this year, but I don't know. Does Montreal have another gear to give? And the reason why I'm lumping the Winnipeg Jets in with the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens is not just because of the current standings, but because of the game that the Maple Leafs played against the Jets, they absolutely dominated the Winnipeg Jets in that game, yet they only won the game by one goal, and that was because of Connor Hellebuck. He absolutely goalied the Toronto Maple Leafs and kept his team within striking distance. Even when the team plays bad, they have a chance to win. I would go even as far as to say that the Winnipeg Jets are going to finish ahead of the Montreal Canadiens in the standings. But that's just what I think. What do you guys think in the comment section? Are the Toronto Maple Leafs still favorites to win the Canadian division? And how does the rest of the division fall into place? Uh, who finishes second, third, and fourth to you? Let me know down in the comment section. And make sure to like the video if you did like it. And subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember, the Toronto Maple Leafs are just getting started here.